tonight, the grim COVID-19 record with more than 238,000 Americans dead, now a flicker of hope. Early results from a late stage clinical vaccine trial from Pfizer showing the vaccine is more than 90% effective in preventing the coronavirus than a placebo. So when might this vaccine be approved? Earlier this evening, I spoke to Dr. Richard Besser, the former acting director of the CDC, and now the CEO of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Dr. Besser, thank you so much for joining us. First question, Pfizer announced astounding results in their vaccine trials. What's your reaction? Well, you know, Byron, I, I think this is exciting. I, I always urge caution until a company's results have been validated by impartial scientists. But when you have a vaccine that, that's more than 90% effective, that can be a real, real game changer. That's along the same level of protection that you get from a measles vaccine. And the FDA had, had set a threshold for approval of, for vaccines anything above 50% reduction in, in, in risk. So it's very exciting news. As you know, Dr. Fauci called the uh, effective rate extraordinary and unexpected. Did you ever think we'd get a vaccine that's this successful to deal with such a deadly virus? Well, you know, you always hope that you're going to get a vaccine that's that's as good as as measles, as, as good as some of the best ones out there. Uh, but there are a lot of vaccines where the, the level of protection is nowhere near that. You know, each year we, we encourage people to get the flu vaccine, knowing that in a good year it will reduce your, your risk by about, about half. So, you know, this vaccine, it's got some challenges in terms of, of how you distribute it. It's, it will take a while to ramp up production. Uh, but if it holds up and it's as effective in, in longer periods of time uh, as it's shown to be in this seven-day uh, evaluation, uh, that could be absolutely incredible. Now, to that point, we know it's early, but what do we know about the safety of this vaccine? Well, you know, we don't know a lot yet. The FDA is requiring that companies follow patients for a full two months, uh, and this vaccine hasn't gotten through that full period. The other thing is that this vaccine is using a new technology. It's something called mRNA, and that's never been used for a, a vaccine in humans before. And so it's going to be really important to follow people even longer than that, follow larger populations, and make sure that the vaccine is not only effective but, but is safe. Doc, as you know, Pfizer and three other companies are in late stage trials. When can the American people expect a vaccine to be widely available? Well, you know, there's a lot of effort going into to planning. You know, there's vaccines where the government has already uh, paid to, to have the vaccines be manufactured. So if they're effective, they can start to roll out. Uh, there's been a lot of planning by the, the CDC and by state health departments in terms of how they would distribute vaccines when they're, they're available. Um, but this vaccine, if this vaccine pans out, it's really not going to have a big impact this winter. You know, in the early course, it will go to healthcare providers, those who are in positions where they're at, at greatest risk. But it's not going to be widely distributed to the general public until this spring or, or later than that. Doc, cases have never been higher in our country. We passed the 10 million cases today, and another surge is sweeping the country. Is there anything we can be doing to get under control before the vaccine comes? Well, there is so much that we can be doing. Uh, one is that we, we need to come together as a nation and recognize that following the, the recommendations of public health is the best way to get our economy up and running in a sustained way. It's the best way to protect each other. Uh, it's the best way to make sure that our children are safe, that our parents are safe, uh, that those in our communities are safe. Uh, I'm hoping that now that the election is, is over, uh, we can see governors stepping up and mandating masks uh, in, in each of their states. We just saw Utah do that, and uh, that was a terrific move. Uh, we estimate that if everyone in America wore, wore masks in the appropriate uh, time and, and interactions, there would be tens of thousands of lives that could be saved. And that's a small thing to ask people to do. Doc, any concern at all that news of, of a possible vaccine may give the public a false sense of security? Well, it's given me a, a real concerns throughout this, that, that a lot of people are saying there's a vaccine around the corner, so why do I need to inconvenience myself by, by wearing a mask or keeping away from others or limiting my behavior? Uh, those are the things that will save lives this winter. And, you know, the, the, the story's not fully in yet on this vaccine. While this news is encouraging, uh, we need to see a, a longer period of time, 28 days, to see how it uh, protects at that point. 
We need to see how it does against serious COVID infections. This initial result was against all infections, and FDA wants to see how it predicts against the most serious infections. And then we need to look at safety data. So, you know, while this is encouraging, we're not there yet. And I hope people will, will step up and do the things because during the winter, it's virus is high time. They love the winter. Viruses survive longer. They stay in the air longer. And we spend more time indoors. And, and that really favors the virus. And Doc, final question. I know you and I have talked about this plenty of times. I know you're concerned about this, this notion of fatigue. Their nation, the world has been dealing with this for a long time. Any sense with this vaccine possibly coming down the road, any sense you think when our nation, when this world might get this virus under control? I do worry, Byron, about the issue of, of fatigue. But as you look across the nation uh, and states that thought that, well, because they were rural and less densely populated, they didn't have anything to worry about. Uh, we're seeing the, the numbers of cases skyrocketing. We're seeing hospitals fill up uh, and, and states having to, to put in mobile kind of hospital units. Uh, so I'm hoping that this sense of fatigue doesn't overcome uh, people's uh, ability and willingness to do those measures that will save lives. Uh, because the models, you know, are only a prediction. We have the ability to, to, to make those, those modelers wrong by doing things to reduce the spread of this disease in our country. And I hope that we can come together as, as Americans and do it for each other. Dr. Richard Besser, always grateful for your time and your expertise. We'll see you down the road. Thanks so much for having me. Great talking with you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.